analyze any site anywhere in the world in 15 minutes. Challenge accepted. Let's go. Let's dive straight into Autodesk Forma and I'll show you exactly how you can analyze any site anywhere in the world in less than 15 minutes. So once we arrive at the Autodesk Forma homepage, we can either start our free trial or we can access our hub and sign in directly. Once you found your way into the Autodesk Forma hub, you'll see a screen very similar to this. What we want to do as our first step is start a new project, of course. So top left hand corner, you're either going to see new project or if you don't have any projects yet, you'll see these two spaces as well. Once the main screen is loaded up, you'll be able to type in an address. Anywhere in the world that you'd like to analyze a site, we can go ahead and start searching. In my case, I want to do something close to the city and somewhere in Western Australia. So let's just type in a random address. You'll see that it automatically takes us to this space and we can zoom in and out using a scroll wheel to confirm the map area. Now, the selection of the map area is relatively important because the more we zoom out, the more information we're going to take. And you'll see at a certain point, it's not going to allow us to actually confirm that map. So we have to zoom in to the absolute minimum, which is just under two kilometers wide and then select confirm map area. It is going to take a few seconds for Autodesk Forma to create all of this context and all of this data. Autodesk has already imported the map information for us. So we have the terrain automatically included, which is incredible. Let's talk about the basic functionality and how you move around with Autodesk Forma. Firstly, using the scroll wheel of your mouse, you can zoom in and out just like any other software. If you right click, and hold, you can orbit around as much as you like, and then obviously up, down, left, right. And if you left click, that is a selection tool. If you click on the scroll wheel and drag, that is your pan feature. Otherwise, the main shortcuts are the escape key, the enter key, and that's about it. You'll notice as we move through the UI that Autodesk does provide their own letter shortcuts throughout. If you wish to learn them, you're most welcome to, but you don't need to learn any shortcuts to be able to use this program. It is so, so simple to understand. So typically to start the project, what I like to do is come across to our left hand panel, which is gonna give us a general proposals layout, which we can add multiple later down the track. But what we first wanna to come to is library. Now, as you can see, the terrain has already been included which is the terrain we see here in the grayscale. But in this scenario, I wanna order some more data. I need some more information before I can make any accurate assessment on my site. Don't worry, when I say order data, it is completely free to order most of this information. So for example, as you can see, we have a number of elements that we can order and import into our project. Open Maps provides us with a relatively low level of detail, building massing, but it's still all building massing. So straight away, I wanna add my building massing utilizing that same grid area and select order. You'll see that it will start to load and eventually in a few seconds, it will import directly into our Autodesk Forma project. While we're here, I also wanna add all of our streets so I can go ahead, same sort of scenario, order the streets and allow that to import directly into our model. Now, as you can see, we've closed out of that panel and we've come back to our main topographical map, which does not show any of our streets and does not show any of our 3D buildings. So what we wanna do is then in our library section, come across to our buildings, hit the preview button. And in a matter of seconds, we will see all of the massing of the building forms automatically imported into our project, which saves us so much time. So let's go ahead and press add and repeat that same process for the roads. And there we go. Most of our site is pre-populated with all of the road data, all of the terrain data, and all of the building masses. Now we've imported that information in a matter of minutes not days, not weeks, not hours, trying to model all of this, literally minutes, and we haven't even started yet. So now let's continue working through Autodesk Forma to show you exactly what this is built for and the power it has behind it. Like I mentioned previously, this is a hypothetical site somewhere random in Western Australia. So we can literally pick any site, take any of these massing models, use them, delete them, do as we see fit. So for me personally, this looks like a nice big site. I'm gonna pretend like this is our site for this scenario. So I've selected the building that's on it, and then I'm gonna come across to our right-hand panel for the first time and select Edit Base to make changes. I'm gonna select that entire building and simply delete it. Up the top, you'll see this will affect one proposal and I'm gonna select Done. So now that building from this scenario is completely gone and we can utilize that site however we wish. So let's start by defining our actual site. On the right hand side, you'll see the main tools in Autodesk Forma, and on the top of the right hand panel, you'll see the main analysis tools. 
So to start off, we're gonna scroll down to our site limits and simply select site limit. All we have to do is start drawing. If you're finding it challenging to draw in 3D, you can come across to the bottom toolbar and select 2D so that we're looking down from a floor plan perspective. So in this scenario, um, be expecting the site to be most of this dotted line all the way to the rear footpath. Again, hypothetical, so it could be smaller, it could be bigger, but for the purpose of this, I've gone around, clicked all of my corners and created my site. It will be automatically defined in red. So if we scroll out, Visually, we can straight away see exactly what our site looks like, exactly where our site is, and we don't have to worry about trying to relocate that later down the track. Now that we've defined our site, we can take two paths. We can either start modeling and creating different shapes and forms and functions, multiple stories, introducing landscaping, and then analyzing to see how that building performs, or we can analyze the site itself prior to see how this site functions considering all of the environment as it is, make informed decisions before we start designing, design and repeat the process. Personally, that's the way I like to operate with Autodesk Former. I like to understand my site first, then I like to design, then I like to understand the impact of my design on the site. So let's run it in that way. You'll see at the top, we have a number of different analysis tools. The first one highlighted automatically is area metrics, which we don't have any volumes created. So all of it will state zero, except our site area, which is defined as 860 square meters. To design good architecture, we need good sunlight. We need good wind exposure. We need a whole series of analytical tools. Sunlight is one of the most important. The other buildings will shade this property. So I need to understand exactly what they're gonna do and how they're gonna do it. By selecting sunlight, we can then simply come to the bottom and hit run analysis. That analysis won't take very long at all. It will analyze this entire site and in a few seconds, it will tell us this report is ready for us. Whilst that report is running, I wanna do the exact same thing with wind and microclimate. Once we've started our analyses, we'll see little dots appear above the icons where we've started to run the analysis. As you can see, the dot above the sun is green, which it means is ready for us to view, whilst the wind is still going on in the background. So let's jump across to our sunlight hours and then press open analysis. What we'll then see is a heat map generated by Autodesk Former, which is relatively easy to understand. Down the bottom, you have a sliding color scale yellow being almost nine, 10 hours of sunlight a day, and the dark blue being almost none. So the brighter the image is, the more sunlight it's going to get. The darker it is, the less sunlight it's going to get. So as we know, this was our site here in the middle of the screen, and we can see that our neighboring buildings are overshadowing us just a little bit. Now, of course, we could try and analyze and guess what these colors are, depending on how good our vision is, or of course, we can come up to the top, select the inspect tool, and then click anywhere we need. So we'll see that as we click through this, Autodesk Former is automatically telling us how many hours of sunlight each particular space is gonna get throughout the day. What this tells me as an architect is we wanna be designing closer towards this side of the property, utilizing as much of this as we can, opening up the back courtyard, and at the same time, knowing that we're not really gonna be overshadowing much except the road. Moving over to our solar analysis study, we'll see very similar information. All of the rooftops in this particular area are doing very, very well. Most of them are going to be able to perform very efficiently with solar panels. Moving on to our microclimate, we're gonna see a number of things available to us straight away. By the color spectrum at the bottom of the page, we can see it is quite hot straight away at two o'clock in January. But we, if we come up to the top and use our inspection tool, we'll see it ranges from 34 degrees all the way to 36 degrees on our site. Now, because our wind analysis is also completed, we can adjust our temperature statistics based on the wind. Let's change the wind to our east direction and we'll see we're getting a very different heat pattern on this site. In the middle of the site, it's almost 37 degrees, whilst in those wind corridors, it's cooling it down to 34. So overall, we're seeing quite a good cooling effect from the wind tunnels. If we change over to June, for instance, in the middle of winter, we'll see the same scenario. The middle of the site is the hottest whilst the outer edges toward the road are quite cool. If we change to a southerly breeze, of course, we'll see something different once again, and the site is a little bit more consistent overall now. 
coming into our wind analysis tool while it's still analyzing in the background for full data to be able to use with other analysis tools we can see our general information within our circle. Just like everything else, we have our color spectrum down the bottom, which tells us the strength of the wind itself. You see, generally on our site, it's comfortable, it's standing, it is not sitting, we're not protected. But these three buildings behind are generally protecting their backyard spaces. So now we know that we have to create our own comfortable seating areas throughout the house to be able to actually execute this properly. We'll also see that these main roads, the two in front and below, running east to west, have strolling winds. Meaning that these roads are corridors for wind tunnels. Thankfully for us, the north and south roads aren't as bad, but we are still picking up a couple pockets where the wind does increase. So from this information, we know that we're not going to be able to design anything at the front that is going to be generally comfortable for sitting. It is going to be comfortable for standing, but we are going to feel that breeze coming through. So now that we've gone ahead and analyzed everything we needed to for this site, we can start developing some ideas. And to do that, we're simply using the tools within Forma. So we can come to buildings and create a basic building, a line building or a house. We can utilize the vegetation, of course. If we wanted more accurate data on roads and railways, we could include that ourselves. Otherwise, we can enhance our modeling with general volumes and surfaces and geometric 3D sketches. If we're using Revit, we can import our Revit model directly into Forma so that we don't have to model it in Forma at all. But because this is a Forma tutorial, that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's come back up to top to buildings and let's go for a basic building. Now I'm going to come back into my 2D plan view and create a custom L-shaped building. So by simply clicking through and finishing where I started, I can create an automatic 3D building. Going back to 3D, it has created a four-story monolithic space, which it really doesn't need to be. This is either going to be a two-story home or even a single-story home. So all we need to do is select the top of our building that we've created hover over the dot in the middle and drag it down to two stories or where we're happy. Now, if we wanted to edit that in any way, shape or form, we could simply double click on our main building, select one of the nodes and start adjusting spaces. So if we wanted a little bit more of an angled building, we wanted something a bit more creative, we could go ahead and do that very easily. To finish, we simply press enter and we exit out of that editing mode. If we wanted to introduce a line of trees or areas of vegetation, we could simply come down to vegetation down below, click through the same way we did our buildings and trees will automatically be created. Now, if these trees are too big, too small, we can select that line of trees and we'll see vegetation down at the bottom. The height of these trees, potentially we only want them to be three meters. The spacing, maybe we want to be two meters and the width potentially is two meters as well. So now we automatically have updated trees for our model following the terrains, following the building line. Now at the beginning of this video, I said our area metrics are automatically selected and they're all zeros. If we're not selecting our building, it's going to remain a zero. If we select our building, it is going to provide our ground floor area, which we can assign as residential, commercial, unspecified or add our own information in. So by simply coming down to the bottom, selecting residential, it will turn yellow and we know that building is residential. If for whatever reason your building isn't shown as yellow when you've changed the function, make sure you come down to the bottom, select the display options and change your building colors from unit types to functions. The same applies if you wanted the satellite image turned on, the terrain showed or the shadows at a different time. So in real time, I know that all of this area in the middle of winter is automatically going to be shaded by my building. So maybe I need to actually think about this further and reduce this matting. So instead of selecting that whole building from the top roof section, I can come to the side and select just the upper floor. And in that scenario, by selecting the upper floor, I can drag that back, open it up and automatically reduce the shading on the ground floor below. Now we can go back and rerun our analyses to understand how this is impacting our site, how it is impacting the environment that we've created. So if we simply run a sun analysis again, we can view our model and how it is impacted. After we've run our basic analysis, decided that we need to make some more changes, what we can actually do is come back to our three lines up the top to where our proposals are and duplicate this proposal. So by right clicking on those three dots and duplicating, 
we can rename the proposal as well to proposal two. And then we can go ahead and start changing our massing so we can compare directly models with the analysis we've run. So let's go ahead and quickly adjust this model here, adjusting the massing as we see fit, updating for the information that we've learned so far. And then when that is completed, we can go up to the top and compare. So when we enter our compare screen, all we need to do is select the proposals we want to compare. So in proposal one, we want the latest version of the sunlight, drag and drop on the left screen, the right screen, wherever you prefer. Proposal two, same scenario. We want to see the sun. So drag and drop that in. Once we've imported both of our proposals, they're going to adjust and orbit in real time, identical on both screens. That way we can analyze and understand exactly what we're looking for. So as you can see previously, we had in proposal one, quite a lot of open area here and not much shade here. However, by introducing this bridge and introducing an extra volume, we've actually created a worse effect than what we were looking for at the start. This walkway, for instance, could be entirely glass though, and therefore this shadow wouldn't be as overwhelming as it's shown on this. On the other hand, by adjusting the angle of this top floor, we've gone from having zero hours of sunlight compared to two and a half hours of sunlight on that wall. This information can be repeated with any of the analyses. Overall, that is Autodesk Former in an absolute nutshell, and it is incredibly easy to understand and use. Anyway, that is all for me, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. There is an Autodesk Former link in the description if you're interested in trying out this software. Otherwise, like always, I will see you next week.